I surrender. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Time. When we think of time, we think of clocks ticking, alarm bells ringing, the sand draining from an hourglass, the sun setting and rising again the next day. We think back in our memories of the past and how far we've come. We dream of who or what or where will be in the future. We think of the history of civilization, country, humanity, our planet, and our ever-evolving and changing universe. Time travel. How about the movie Back to the Future? We think of what we've done and how much we have yet to do, and if only we had the time. We think of growing old. <laughs> we contemplate death of our, our loved ones and ourselves. Do we really have a past and a future? Or just memories and aspirations of what was and potentially will be? Is it a real scientific phenomenon to be respected? or just a fleeting delusion and construct of the human mind. Time is a trickster, and its biggest trick of all is making us think it's real. Okay, let's look at clock time. Everybody's pretty familiar with this, but any of you ever experienced a candle clock? way beyond before my time. Water clocks, hourglass, sundials, mechanical pendulum clocks, the modern sophistication of wristwatches, time zones, atomic clocks, and of course, the iPhone. So that pretty much covers clock time, right? Okay, good. All right, what about space time? Einstein's theory of rel relativity created a fundamental link between space and time. The universe can be viewed as having three dimensions, up, down, forward, backward, left, right, and in one time dimension. This four-dimensional space is referred to as the space-time Continuum. And what about perceptual time? Our experience of life and time is often a very personal and subjective one. Two people might share the same moment, as in conversation, witness an event unfold, a concert, an opera, a movie, or undergo a similar incident like a car accident, yet have completely different interpretation and perception of it than the other person. Perceptual or psychological time is greatly affected by your mind's ability to stay present in the moment. You could be walking in the most beautiful and serene landscape Yet if your mind is busy thinking, worrying, or projecting itself into the past or the future, it's like you're not even there. You're in your head. And thus, your pers perspective of time is it's skewed. So, you know, music is one way to bring all of these together. And I'll use the illustration of a CD. Each track on the disc is a certain length of time, and the total time of each track adds up to the full length of the album. This would be similar to clock time, 
as the stereo display tracks the elapsing time it takes to play each song. All the songs in their entirety already exist on the compact disc in digital form. This would be analogous to space-time, where everything and all potential outcomes already exist. Your enjoyment of the music would be likened to perceptual time or your subjective experience to the songs as any given track is played through the stereo. You can't listen to every song simultaneously, even they do all exist on the compact disc. Therefore, you can only enjoy what's being played right now in this moment of time. Get it? You and I are essentially infinite choice makers. In every moment of our existence, we are in the field of all possibilities where we have access to an infinity of choices. Each day, we are faced with an infinite number of choices. And each choice we make sends us down a certain path opening doors and closing others, and creating the adventure that becomes the life of our own design. Life really is a choose-your-own-adventure story. Although there may be any, many outside influences vying for your attention, in the end, we are the ones that choose what we will become. As we become more aware of this, we awaken to the vast importance of each decision we make and how it might affect the outcome of our lives. The past, present, and future all exist simultaneously as a potentiality or possibility. It's up to us through our, our creative observation to collapse the wave of probability of our life's potential into the particle of our life reality. This reduction can only happen in this precise moment of now. That's why the sages and mystics of all time refer to now as your only point of power. In other words, start thinking of your life as a role-playing video game. Say, what? <laughs> okay, when you play a role-playing video game, all of the potential outcomes already exist within the disc. It's all based on the decisions you make in each step of the game. All of the outcomes already exist as possibility, and you're just choosing your own version of the adventure as you go along. As hard as this may be to fathom, our universe operates in a very similar manner. All of our life's potential outcomes may already exist within the digital, digital matrix known as time, perhaps in a multiverse or in some parallel universe where we've made different decisions. The current reality you're experiencing is simply the byproduct of the choices you made in each successive moment in life. Nothing set in stone. You can choose to walk a new life path. And if you desire, simply by taking different actions now. The future is a concept. It doesn't exist. There is no such thing as tomorrow. There never will be because time is always now. That's one of the things we discover when we stop talking to ourselves and stop thinking. We find there is only the present. Only an eternal now. Thank you, Alan Watts. The past, it's only a fading memory. The future exists as an assumption. Both are figments of our own 
imagination. Time! It's in the mind. The past and the future can only exist when we think about them. The only time you can do anything is right now. So, if time isn't real, then what is? Now you know the answer. Only this moment is real. Only this exact, precise moment of now. It's the only place where you can be, you can do, or have anything. That's why it's so precious and so powerful. So, let's go to Eckhart Tolle to wrap this all up and see what Eckhart has to say about it. He says, time isn't precious at all. It's an illusion. What you perceive as precious is not time, but the one point that is out of time, the now. That is precious indeed. The more you are focused on time, past, or future, the more you miss the now, which is the most precious thing there is. So, what time is it? Thank you very much. <laughs>